everyone! Welcome to X Fundy Diaries. My name is Ellie, my pronouns are she, they, and this video is part one of two about my Awana experience. If you haven't seen my first Awana video and you're not familiar with the program, I would definitely recommend watching that first because that will give you the context for this video. I only have vague and generic memories about my elementary school years in Awana, so I'll be talking about my middle school and high school years. At the time, Awana called their middle school program JV and their high school program Varsity, so those are the two groups that I'll be referring to throughout this video. As a young teenager, Awana was an escape for me. My home life was very rough in a plethora of ways. My dad was physically absent much of the time, working late and taking lots of weekend work trips, and my mom was emotionally absent, talking on the phone and taking long naps. In retrospect, I think my mom was dealing with a lot of mental health issues, including severe depression, but unfortunately this will probably always just be a guess because she has no desire to go to therapy or to view those issues in any other way than spiritual warfare. As the oldest kid and assigned female at birth, I had to pick up a lot of my parents' slack. And during the day when we were at home, my main job was to look after my younger siblings in between chores and trying to do schoolwork. When my parents were present, I was under an immense amount of scrutiny, and this felt very suffocating. So Awana meetings were like a breather, a few hours during my week where I could come up for some air. Please don't misunderstand. The environment was not that different from the one at home. In fact, the overlap was seamless. The Christian nationalist values, the authoritarian power structures, the child indoctrination, the patriarchy, the purity culture, the shame, I could go on but my purpose there was different. At home, I had to fulfill all these roles, but at Awana, I got a short break from all that. And it was the similarities between Awana and my family that made that possible. If they weren't so similar, I wouldn't have felt comfortable there. I was so brainwashed and so loyal to my parents and their worldview that I was not going to rebel even if I got the chance. Because my Awana group was full of homeschool families very similar to mine, I felt like I belonged there. I viewed them as my extended family and my home away from home. September 20th, 2004. When I'm at Awana, it seems so different. This won't make any sense, but it feels like I actually like myself. Maybe it's because those kids like me. They love me for who I am. I just feel confident. I feel sure of myself. I feel like I fit in, like that's where I belong. We're like a family. We get along so well together. I can't imagine what it would be like without them. My grandpa always talks about how the people he volunteers with are his extended family and his home away from home. Well, that's what Awana feels like for me. And if one person drops out, we wouldn't be complete. I've talked before how growing up as a Fundy homeschooler was isolating because of the extremes of our worldview and our lifestyle, and the constant pressure to be in and not of the world. And this Awana group was a great fit for me because the other kids were under very similar pressure. And not only would they not make fun of me for how I was being raised, but they would understand it because it's how they were being raised too. October 5th, 2004. Dear Jesus, I want to thank you so much for bringing my JV group closer and closer together, little by little, all the time. I think that's where I really belong. You knew before I was born, when I was wrought in secret, that I would later long for a close group like this. One that's not scared to help each other, pray for each other, talk about life issues, and talk about you. Life issues is code for culture wars based on a biblical worldview. So keep that in mind. You know I want to stand up for you, whatever the cost, Lord, 
but it helps when your friends do it too. And it's a lot more fun. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for loving me so much and help me to love you. Even if that group broke up next Sunday, help me not to blame you and to trust you that you have a plan. I don't have time to write out all the names of my friends and their needs, but please bless them, Lord. Help me to love them equally as brothers and sisters in Christ. And bless my family. Help us to do what's right for each other. Amen. So as I was starting to really, really love my Awana group, you can hear me trying not to make it an idol and to always place it back in the Lord's hands. That it doesn't belong to me, I can't be super attached to it, because I always have to put God first and make sure that I'm not allowing anything to come before my love and devotion to Him. Even a group that is all about serving God could become an idol. So I felt like I had to be really on top of that as a teenager. The way I wrote those entries made it sound like Awana was this very positive place where we all got along and built each other up. And at the time, I wholeheartedly believed that it was. But with distance and age, I can see that it was actually quite the opposite. Obviously, the elements of Christian nationalism and patriarchy and purity culture, etc., are enough to make the environment toxic. But beyond that, there was actually a general culture of bullying. It was usually relatively subtle. There were no physical fights or anything quite that dramatic. But people were continuously making fun of each other, putting each other down, gossiping, talking about other people the moment they left the room, and just generally acting superior, not only to the outside world, but also to each other. And it wasn't just the kids behaving this way. The adults, especially the leaders, actually modeled it and encouraged it. There was often an undercurrent of drama happening amongst the Awana parents and the leaders, and they would often pit us kids against each other, make fun of some while praising others, and contributing to this weird social hierarchy. But in like a fun way, it was very confusing. And sometimes if we weren't listening, they would just yell at us or shame us. So that was another element too. One of the reasons I say all of this with such certainty is because I have a very thorough record of it. Beginning in eighth grade, I brought a video camera to Awana and I and another friend would film games and book time and the times that we would help the younger kids and lots of moments in between. We also filmed our yearly family camping trips in the summer. So I have a documentary's worth of footage of my JV and varsity groups. And the toxic dynamics that I mentioned are very easily recognized. I won't be sharing any of these clips that show those dynamics because I would like to respect the privacy of the people in the videos. But there are a few Awana related clips that I would like to share. This first one was for an end of the year video that I was editing to show at an award ceremony. And I was trying to make an artsy intro. It's basically a spread out pile of my Awana book, my Bible, a Casting Crown CD, and a notebook of handouts that went with our Awana lessons. I think I never ended up using this clip in the video because I realized later that you can see a shadow of the lens cap hanging down from the camera. But I love that I can share it with you now. By the way, I had to mute the audio for copyright reasons, but I was playing High of 75 by Reliant K in the background while I was filming. I also have some clips to share of the Awana Olympics events that my JV and varsity groups went to. Each year, Awana hosts regional events for different age groups that involve game competitions and Bible quizzing. At the time that I attended, they called the JV events JV Jam and the varsity events Summit. Don't ask me why. Every year had an official t-shirt 
And the year that I was in eighth grade, it was three jam jars to represent the fruits of the spirit and to go with the JV jam theme. And even as dorky homeschoolers, we were rolling our eyes at that. The Bible quizzing was not my favorite part of these events. I wasn't very good at it because I had a hard time memorizing the exact right words and remembering the references. We also had to memorize answers to biblical questions that were also very specific. I often felt like I was letting my team down and I would have gladly opted out. But to participate in the games portion of these events, you also had to do the Bible quizzing. So I would nervously tolerate the Bible quizzing in order to get to my favorite part, the games. Here are some clips from the JV Jam in 2005 and the Varsity Summit in 2006. I have a feeling that anyone who has done the Awana Olympics before will be transported right back simply by the sound of the air horn that they use to announce the start of each round. Okay, well, you know, we're here at the JV Jam. There's all the people over there. Our sprint teams got third, I think, and then our marathon teams got fourth. Come on up, girls. I told you 
The Iwana Olympics were definitely a fun part of the year for me, but my favorite event of all was our yearly family camping trips. Iwana does have an official summer camp, or at least they did when I was a member. You may have noticed the leader in one of those clips ask who's going to camp this year. But I was not allowed to go to any camps unsupervised, whether they were Christian or not. And I'm guessing that a lot of the parents of my homeschool friends felt the same. So our Awana group did our own family camping trip instead. My dad never came to these camping trips, but my mom and younger siblings always did. June 29th, 2005. Everybody knows how someone feels after leaving friends. There's only one word to describe it. Sad. And since the camping trip ended today, that is exactly how I feel. We had a blast as a group and became tighter in our relationships. Opposite sexes are totally talking to each other way more than before. And I got to know everyone much better, especially siblings and parents of my group. I sure miss my group already. We had so much fun eating, campfiring, not sure that's a verb, but okay. <laughs> Playing soccer, kick the can, hide and seek tag and capture the flag helping each other with chores and dishes, playing cards, singing worship songs, and getting scared by our leader's stories around the fire. The six girls in my tent talking until 1 a.m. Did I mention eating? But most of all, just being. Being together in the moment. I got lots of compliments on how helpful I was from the other leaders and parents and mom. I'm so glad I'm making that kind of a legacy but I owe it all to Jesus. He is my all. As we drove home through the forest scenery, I sat towards the window in the front, silent tears running down my face. I just had so much fun and was gonna miss that trip so much. <laughs> 